allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Yes, so we would, or well, good evening, everybody. This is a September 28th meeting of the ZBA. Uh, our chair, McNary, is absent, so I would ask for a motion to establish board member Jerry Bowen as acting chair. I'd like to make a motion to Second. establish. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Great. So, Mr. Bowen, you will take control. Thank you, and uh, thanks for the opportunity to fill in for Mr. McNary, who's uh, not with us tonight. Um, so. First item on the list is Camp Victory Lake, number 21-15Z, location 277 Crumb Elbow Road, High Park, New York, 12538, grid number 6265-04-630, Three five zero um, in attendance. Um, anybody from? No. Okay. I'd like a motion to um, open the public hearing. I make a motion to open the public hearing. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Against? Okay. Um, any any public opinion? Any comment? Anybody here from? Nope. Okay. Great. Um, we are awaiting the CEQA determination from the planning board lead agency. Applicant has submitted new plan to the Department of Public Works, works and is awaiting approval. Um, I, I need a motion to adjourn the public meeting to October 26, 2022. I make a motion to adjourn till October 26, 2022. Second. There's no public comment, right? Yeah, I, I Did asked. You ask? oh, okay, I didn't hear it, sorry. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Against? <coughs> Uh, number two is Mark and Lisa Vomitko, uh, number 22-06Z, location 120 River Road, Hyde Park, New York, 12538, grid number 6064-03-531762. Uh, I'd like a motion to reopen the public meeting hearing, I'm sorry. Motion to reopen the public hearing. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All against? Okay. Um, this application was withdrawn on September 2nd, 2022, thus ending the ZBA review. Uh, I need a motion to close the public meeting and dis dismiss Make this a motion to close the public hearing. All in favor? S the Aye. second, I'm sorry? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Against? Unanimous. Okay. Um, the next on the agenda is uh, Christopher Ishak, number 22-08Z, uh, location 34 Greenbush Drive. You have to leave. Can I, can I say that? Yeah. 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 Yes. Uh, yeah. What's the question? Paul Donnelly has to recuse himself. Yes. Yeah. So Member Donnelly is recused. He can leave the dais. Um, also, we would make note to the applicant, I don't think is here, um, that being that there are only three members of the board, he would need all three to vote uh, unanimously on the application. So we would give him the offer or the, the option to adjourn the matter. Um, but if he's not here, then we can open the public hearing, continue that. Mm -hmm. I, I make a motion that we reopen the public hearing. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Against? Perfect. There's any comments? Yes, you may, please. Good evening, uh, Acting Chairman Bowen and members of the Zoning Board. My Sorry. name is Rebecca Valk. Can you please um, use a you may, you may, oh, Sure. If you'd like to say it, you may. Please. Okay. You're welcome. My name is Rebecca Valk. Uh, I would ask that. Uh, oh, wait a second. Oh, I see the applicant. Would you like the applicant to have an opportunity before? I would, thank you. Yeah. Same here. Okay. A 
a moment's delay. Thank you. So we reopened the public hearing, and now we can do it. Mm -hmm. So I think the applicant is on the way, and in the interest of the applicant and the people here for the public hearing, and that they have the ability to question them accordingly, um, I believe the board should make a motion to modify the agenda and move this matter to the end so that we can address other matters. So a temporary close of the public hearing, yeah. so move to do that, and then um, move, move to uh, address the next matter on the agenda. Move for a temporary close of the public hearing to move and move the motion to the end of the agenda. Second. All in favor? Aye. Against? Zero. Okay. Okay. Hi, Paul. We will address uh, that case at the end. Uh, the next item on the list is um, Sherry Digman, number 22-16Z, location 23 River Road, High Park, New York, 12538, grid number 6065-04-579169, Landings District. Uh, I need a, uh, a motion to open up motion to open the public hearing for Sherry Digman. All in favor? A second, please. Second. second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Against? Okay, fine. Uh, good evening. Good evening. Good evening. We've had a, a lot of correspondence back and forth and from you and from uh, our zoning administrator particularly, um, uh, Kathleen, and I'm wondering if, you, if, if anything more you have to say uh, for us to hear on, on the um, public record. Yeah, I have a comment about the letter that Pete Andros sent you, mm -hmm. complaining about the Botini truck as being an example. Sure. You have a letter from Pete Andros dated yeah. September 21st. I, I, I'm going to read that into the record after you finish. Okay. But go ahead. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> it's very obvious from his letter. First of all, he's been trespassing in my yard. He takes pictures and sends them to the town, which is very creepy. Um, and he makes up things that aren't true. Page two is about the Botini fuel does not own the property. Blah, 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 blah. Mm -hmm. um, I actually received correspondence from the town of Hyde Park about this matter, which I addressed with the town of Hyde Park. Okay? There's nothing illegal about having the Botini truck parked there. It's not big enough to trigger the, the length of it's not over 25 feet, and it is driven by a tenant who lives on the property, my son. Mm -hmm. That is the letter of the law. But Pete makes it sound like I'm just flagrantly violating the law. And he does that repeatedly in here. Um, the two sheds on the property, one of them is going to be a playhouse for grandchildren. Neither one of them is physically attached to the property that they can't be moved. They're not permanent structures. This to me, and the letter he got from my neighbor next door, if it's even indeed from her, I have written to her at the address that the county has from her and received no response about the fact that the lot next to me never gets any attention. You're speaking so to Deborah about Deborah Howe? Yeah, oh. it's overgrown mm -hmm. nice. uh, with vegetation. Um, if the document that I 
I find it interesting that her letter came after Pete's, the timing, the arrival of the letters. If she indeed wrote this, then I plan on writing to her at this address and offering to fix this however she would like. I will either buy the 92 square feet from her, I will move the retaining wall. That was an honest mistake. Um, but like I said, I've written to her before at the address I had for her in Portland and gotten no response. And since this survey is referred to by Pete before I got a copy of it, I see this as a pattern of behavior on his part that he's using the town for intimidation. Um, he doesn't like the Botini truck parked across from his property. Well, I'll agree it's ugly, but it's not against the law. Mm -hmm. um, to me, and I don't want to make this complicated for you guys, because I've seen people say this was the law or that was the law or the other thing was the law. Until I have a chance to sit down with the actual codes from the years past, right, the zoning rules, the town laws, and do a legal research on all of that, I'm not going to comment on that. Mm -hmm. I'm here because I did not get a building permit to put a window into an existing building. That's why I'm here. Mm -hmm. And I'm in the town of Hyde Park in front of the town justice for not getting that building permit. Mm -hmm. um, if the town of Hyde Park, the building inspector sent it to zoning because I'm in a historic overlay district. The window doesn't have anything to do with the historic overlay. It's clear to me from the nature of this communication, this is about the Botini truck. It's not about whether or not the window was installed correctly. Mm -hmm. And I think that's a fairly warped way to use the justice system. Okay. So I have, I'm asking you all to see that it is in fact silly to ask for a full site plan for the installation of a window in an existing building. Um, and if I don't, and it costs me $150 to appeal to ask you have common sense. If that doesn't work, I guess I go to justice court and plead guilty to not getting the building permit and see if he wants to put me in jail. Because as I have mentioned before, and I repeat, some of the things that the town is requesting do not exist. Asking me to come up with the Dutchess County Behavioral Health Septic System people's sign off on a septic system that was installed in 1966, they don't have the papers. I've asked them. Twice. I asked them in 2008. I asked them again this go round. They, and they told me lots of times people didn't turn in anything. That's the way it was in the 60s. I do know that there are two electrical meters on the property. So at some point, Central Hudson thought it was a legitimate building. It's been taxed. It's on the tax rolls. It's being built in 1966. There are documents in the town record to show it physically exists. And it's called an apartment or a cottage apartment. Um, the thing about the garage, I have no idea. I didn't do it. I wasn't here. That was never closed out. I have no knowledge of that. I know that the structure's never been used as a garage. Um, I would reiterate that the reason I moved the door from the side to the front is because the bedroom downstairs is occupied by a gentleman who will turn 80 in November. He's a disabled Vietnam vet. His mobility is going downhill. He needs to be in a wheelchair. And um, so that's why I'm in trouble, because I moved the door for an old man. So if the town of Hyde Park wants to put me in jail for that, well, then I guess that will be that, because I can't produce records that don't exist. Okay. And that's, do you have questions for me? Acting Chair, I would suggest that given that she's made her statement about the application, you can open the public hearing mm -hmm. and then welcome any comments. I need a motion to open the public hearing for motion sure. Motion to open the public hearing. Second. All in favor? Aye. Well, open the public hearing for uh, Ladies, take any vote. No, they didn't. You had already yeah. opened it, but that's okay. You know. Twice is good. Okay. No, we hadn't. So, <coughs> so you did right now, right? Yeah. That mm -hmm. was just the statement right. which we asked for. Thank yeah. you. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Should I read those two letters now? Yes, and we'll read the letters into the record because they were submitted um, okay. with respect to the appeal that you have pending. I would assure you that the ZBA only will review what is relevant to the appeal. 
to the zoning administrator's determination. Um, the allegations of other violations are beyond the scope of this appeal. So while we appreciate your feedback in addressing those, that's not for them to consider. Right. And we need to read this into the into okay. the record. So this is from this is to the zoning board of appeals. Public hearing, Sherry Digman, number 22-16Z. Um, and this is from Peter J. Andros. Dear members of the board, please accept this letter as my comment on the subject appeal. I will not be able to attend this public hearing in person. I have for many decades represented individuals on entities in my capacity as a consulting engineer regarding the zoning law, most recently Chapter 108 of the Town of Hyde Park Code. I opine that a number of those instances were draconian and of or counterproductive. However, those whom I have represented endured the application approval process in order to comply with the provisions of Chapter 108 and obtain the permits necessary to utilize their land in many cases suffering through variance, special permit and site plan approval processes as at substantial expense. The subject property is located in the Landing Zoning District. The property is burdened with a historic overlay district, a state's district scenic area of statewide significance which compels any use within the district to obtain site plan approval for external structural alterations or construction. The appeal under consideration by your board is the most recent of many actions taken by the applicant ignoring Chapter 108. And they are as follows. The instant, instant structural alteration of an existing garage, the construction of a platform for, for and placement of a prefabricated shed, the second one on a property at a location non-compliant with the bulk regulations for side yard setback, perhaps occupying the required side yard on the subject property as well as the side yard of the otherwise vacant adjacent property. The construction of a retaining wall structure without a building permit likely located totally on the aforementioned property adjacent to the owners. The construction of a parking area within the side yards of both the subject property and the aforementioned adjacent vacant property owned by others, and the construction of above ground bins um, in the front yard. Further, the parking lot developed and referred to here, here uh, and above is used for parking of a commercial vehicle in violation of Chapter 108. The vehicle is clearly advertised on its side panels as Botini Fuels. Botini Fuels does not own the property. Your view of the records of the zoning administrator revealed no proof that any part of the property is tenanted by Botini Fuels or by any other operator that, of that commercial vehicle. Demonstration of such tenancy could be easily provided via lease or other rental agreement va validated by income tax returns of the property owner showing the income from such tenancy. No such proof could be found in the files. It is noted that that um, had the garage doors not been removed and, and walled off, thereby eliminating two wholly enclosed parking spaces, the commercial vehicle could have been garaged out of sight to those passing by or living in the view shed of the parked vehicle. I can provide photographs of the various non-compliant constructions and occupancy if the board requests. This property is a sterling example of why site plan review is required in the historic overlay district when properly documented through a boundary survey by a licensed land survey surveyor, including the surveyed locations of all the improvements on the property, the disregard of the various provisions of Chapter 108, for which the instant exterior construction is merely the most recent example, will be clear. In the absence of the correction of these violations, the strength of Chapter 108 will be irreparably diminished. I support the decision of the Zoning Board to deny the building permit being sought. Very truly yours, Peter J. Andros. That was the first letter. Um, and the second is the uh, neighbor adjacent to your property. And this is from um, Deborah A. Howe, PhD. Um, uh, dear members of the Zoning Board of Appeals, in the matter of Ms. Dingman's appeal, of a building permit denial for non-compliance, I would like to bring to your attention the, the attached copy of the survey of 21 River Road conducted last November by Michael A. Dalbo. I own this vacant prop property and parcel. When I heard that a retaining wall was encroaching on my property, I commissioned him to resurvey re the property. He set the corners on this lot when I purchased it over 40 years ago. 
He found that the retaining wall extends 5.5 feet into my property and the corner marker is now buried under the parking area. According to Ms. Dingman or Dr. Dingman testimony before the board last month, she believes that the use of the garage structure as a dwelling was legally established many years ago. I, I served as a Dutchess County planner from 79 to 1985 before pursuing a career in higher education. I was the county's liaison to Hyde Park with responsibility for county reviews of zoning issues. I wrote Hyde Park zoning code for accessory dwelling units in the early 1980s. The zoning along River Road at that time permitted only one dwelling per 0.25 acres. The ADU code was significant in allowing more density in single family zones. I never saw any indication that the, that garage structure at 23 River Road was being used as a dwelling. Prior to the adoption of the ADU code, use of the garage as a dwelling would have been illegal. After ADUs became an allowable use, conversion of the garage into a dwelling would have necessitated meeting the zoning standards. It is not clear that the appropriate approvals were ever sought regards Deborah, Deborah Howe. So these are the two documents I wanted to read into the, into the minutes. May I ask a question? Certainly. That letter cites testimony I gave here a month ago. Was this woman present? No, she was not. Then how would she know that? What is um, that? I could remark to that. She watched the YouTube video of oh. last month's yeah. meeting. Okay. And that's that's a public record. Anyone okay. can watch. That's as how she as to she, Miss, I did speak to Miss Howe, and she did call the office several times. And this letter came by email from her work email address okay. with her name on it. Uh, I also need to say that um, I did a site visit myself and had a, a lovely visit with Dr. Digman on. Uh, two Wednesdays ago, and we surveyed the property, and much of what is in the record she did s explain to me and exp show me what was going on. I looked at the structure um, inside and out, and uh, it is exactly as she describes it. Um, there were no alterations in, ter in terms of her testimony or in her um, presentation. Any comments or questions from the board? Uh, any public comments? Anybody have something to say? I think uh, our attorney has something to say. Um, given the nature of the appeal, that it is a direct appeal from the zoning administrator's determination, and she is absent this evening, I believe it's the board's position that we would adjourn the public hearing so that any comment she has that is relevant to the appeal, any questions that you have, you can ask of her. You're entitled to a cross-examination during a public hearing, and they're entitled to ask her questions as well. So, um, I understand that, but I also have a hearing before the town justice on October 6th, I believe. Understood. And it is contingent on this decision? Well, <clears throat> if I'm going to be able to get a building permit, then I can go to court on October 6th and show the judge that I got the building permit, and that will end the case that's currently in front of town Understood. court justice. <laughs> yes, I mean, I can send correspondence to the justice court as well that you yeah, are in the process, schedule. and by no fault of your own, that the public hearing was adjourned because the zoning administrator was absent. Uh, one of the members of the um, Chairman Bone, I'd like to arrange at least for myself and anybody else interested a site visit to see what's going on at, at your site. I haven't been there. Okay. We, Unless thought, there was one in July, I was traveling. I thought we did that a couple times. Somebody got I, I was traveling. It, there was a little bit of confusion, yeah. and we apologize for that. Um, uh, I was the only person that did show that on that Wednesday. but uh, yeah, I'd like to do a site visit. Mm -hmm. okay. So we'll, we'll make those arrangements with you? That That's point? fine. Yeah. And I would appreciate if you would <coughs> ask the town justice to push this into December or January. I mean, we, would, we should have our decision. I would anticipate, depending on the public hearing, would be issued at the next meeting in October. But I can request that they adjourn it accordingly. Um, Please do. There, there are. I need somebody to get me the, all the old statutes. 
because this lady says in the 1980s you can have an accessory apartment. Well, it was built in the 1960s, and I think you could have an accessory apartment. And that only your servants can live there if they don't have a kitchen was something was in one of the documents. I would like to actually see the law. I would like to know where I can go to see the town of Hyde Park's building codes and laws back those inquiries can be made to the town clerk for any okay. documents that are in the town's possession still, especially the statutes that you mentioned. Um, I would advise to the extent that I'm here for them, but I don't want to give you legal advice. But this is your opportunity to present that information to the board on your behalf, like during the public hearing and when you're presenting the appeal. So any of those laws that you think are advantageous to your position, we would recommend that you obtain them and present them well, to the board. Okay. I think it's I think I will assert that it was the legally built apartment on the grounds that the county has been taxing it, Central Hudson put in a meter for it. Um, Dutchess County considers it a cottage apartment. Their drawings of it is a cottage apartment. Now people have said without citing anything that back in the 80s, blah, 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 there's no evidence that it was ever a garage. There's no, the certificate of occupancy for a garage was never closed out. Somebody took out a building permit for a garage, nobody ever got one. Um, and I think that's an important consideration. What is the building is kind of important. And whether or not it was built legally, and there are some nuances to this, like my property consists of two lots that were put together at one time. And does that make a difference? There's, there's all that stuff, which is long and complicated, but really I'm here because I put a window in a building. Understood. And being that the zoning administrator is the one best equipped to answer those inquiries and speak mm -hmm. to the determination that she wrote, that is the reason we would adjourn it. But I will happily send correspondence to the court. Okay, we so can adjourn I'd, I'd like a, and thank you for your, um, all your comments. I'd like a, a motion to adjourn the public meeting of uh, Sherry Digman until October 26th, 2020. <laughs> motion to adjourn the public meeting. Second. Until October 22nd. Second. Six. All in favor? Aye. 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 Against? Thank you. Okay. See you next month. And then let somebody will contact me about when you want to come visit. Yeah. And try to try the clerk to get that stuff that you want. I will. I did a FOIA request for all documents related to the property and did not get them all. Miss Ms. Dingman, Dr. Dingman, does the um, ZBA secretary, do we have her contact information? Yes. It's all good. Do By email, way. too? Yes. Okay, thank Sherry you. Sherry Dingman and Hot Mail. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Next up on the agenda is Charles Lamana, number 22-17Z, location 2 Kathy Drive, Hyde Park, grid number 6163-02-504842. This is a, a, an area variant section 105-5.15. Bulk regulations in the neighborhood <coughs> district change front yard setback from 50 feet to 35 feet for the construction of a rear addition on a house already built within the setback. Good evening. Good I'd like evening. a motion to open the public hearing. Motion. Okay. Second. Second. Mm -hmm. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Against? Great. Welcome. Hello, Welcome. sir. Good evening. My uh, name is Michael Berto. I'm the architect for the applicant. Oh, okay. Could you could you spell the last name? Uh, sure. It's um, <clears throat> excuse me. B e r t a. Thank you. So, what we have is we have an existing um, non-conforming dwelling that we're putting an addition. It's totally in the back of the property. Um, the the house is an L shaped. What we're doing is we're infilling a corner in the rear. So the addition, other than a um, a small roof peak is not visible from the front. So it, it's totally in the back. And then unfortunately, the way that some, whatever happened during the time the house was built within 10 feet of the road, of the property line. So because of, because of that, when we put the addition, it winds up being inside the, um, the required 50-foot setback. 
So um, originally we had, if you notice on the site plan, we went to, you know, the side yard is a 20 yard side yard. We had actually stepped the addition in to conform with what we thought was zoning. Um, but through the review process, we came to find out that because of the house is not conforming, uh, we need the front yard variance since we don't meet the setback point because you're on the corner. No, it's, it's really not the corner. Um, it's just, you know, we are corner lot, but because the house, the uh, front, the required front yard is a 50 foot front yard and the addition, the, the house is well within that. It's an existing non-conforming house. So because, you know, where we put the addition, it's unfortunately within the front yard, required front yard setback. Mm -hmm. So, but. Are you, is, is that your presentation? No, I, I heard he asked a question, so I figured well, he's going to have a question. Yeah. yeah. So, um, I mean, so yeah, pretty much, um, you know, again, we are asking for relief only because, you know, we have an existing house that we're infilling, mm -hmm. um, and there's really no other spot that we can put the addition. Perfect. Thank you. Well, I don't know, though, that was my question. When I was reviewing the material this evening, I see you're putting a rear addition on, but you're looking for a front yard setback. So, you, But you answered it in your yeah. presentation, yeah. Okay. Now, one thing I, I would ask you, know, and, and we didn't apply for this, we were just, um, the applicant and I were just talking about it, and since we're here, uh, we, we stepped the addition in, as I had said, to conform with the side yard. So um, her, her thought is, since we're here, if it would be possible to amend the application tonight, to um, to require to to ask for a three foot side yard setback, so that we can square the house up, if it's possible. If if you're going to amend the application, then we would need to have you resubmit that. Then and never re mind. Review it. Yeah. Then never mind. Sure? Yeah. No, they they like that. They because of this, they're 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 a month behind in starting, and they want to get the foundation in before it gets cold. Okay. So it's okay. <clears throat> Any other public comments? I'd like a, uh, a motion to close the public hearing on uh, Charles Lamana. A motion to close the public hearing. Second? Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, we have a, a resolution to read. Resolution to grant area variances. Charles Lamana and Crystal Habanowski to Kathy Drive, Hyde Park, New York, 12538. Resolution number oh, no, no, uh, 6163-02-5048-42. September 28th, 2022, resolution 22-17Z. Whereas applicants Charles Lamana and Crystal Habanowski have submitted an application for an area variance to construct in addition to a single family home located at 2 Kathy Drive, Hyde Park, New York, 12538, Identified as tax parcel 6163-02-504842 in the neighborhood zoning district to site. And whereas the house was constructed under a prior zoning code and the majority of the existing home is within the current front yard setback. <clears throat> and, whereas, and whereas the project is depicted on a proposed site location planned by Michael Berta, dated September 18th, 2022, and a survey map prepared by Johnson Surveying dated August 20, August 2nd, 2021. And whereas applicants authorized Michael Berta to represent their application before the ZBA and whereas the applicant seeks a, a one area variance from zoning law section 108-5.15 as follows, a reduction of the front yard setback from the required 50 feet to 35 feet. And whereas the side setback of a proposed addition is the same as the current house of 20 feet, which is within the permitted side yard setback. And whereas the proposed 24 feet by 20 feet addition of impervious coverage will not cause the coverage to exceed the total maximum impervious requirement of 50% of the parcel. And whereas pursuant to 6 NYCRR 617.5C17, the granting of an area variance for a single family, two family, or three family residence is a type two action under the State Environmental Quality Review Act and is not subject to review under the act. All right. Whereas a duly noted public hearing was held on September 28th, 
2022 during a duly noted meeting during which all those who wish to speak were heard and whereas applicant standards for considering an area variance are set forth in the town law section 267-B, the Hyde Park zoning section 108-33.6B2, which require the board to take into consideration the benefit of the applicant if the variance is granted is weighed against the detriment of the health, safety, and welfare of the general neighborhood or community by such grant. Now it therefore be resolved that the Zoning Board of Appeals makes the following findings in accordance with section 267-B of the Town of Hyde Park <coughs> Zoning Law section 108-33.6B2 regarding the requested variance. The requested variance will not produce an undesirable change in the character of the neighborhood or a detriment to nearby properties. The proposed addition will be added to the back of the house and will not disrupt or change the street view. The benefits sought by the applicant cannot be achieved by some method feasible for the applicant to pursue other than an area variance. The location of the proposed addition is the only site available and fits the flow of traffic within the house. The requested variance is numerically substantial. The variance will cause the permitted setback from 50 feet to 35 feet. The front of the existing house built more than 50 years ago is within 12 feet of the front lot line. The addition does not infringe on the side yard setback. The impact of this addition to the neighborhood is minimal and is far outweighed by the benefits to the applicant. The requested variance will not have an adverse effect or impact on the physical or environmental conditions in the general neighborhood or district. The variance request will have no impact on the surrounding environment. The difficulties are self-created, the applicant stated, the addition to the back of the house will expand the living space and the ability of the family to more fully enjoy the home. Be it further resolved that the Zoning Board of Appeals hereby grants the requested variance subject to the following conditions. Pursuant to section 108-33.5F1, the authorized activity must commence within one year from the date of issuance, otherwise it is revoked. Payment of all escrows, I'm sorry, payment of all fees in escrow. Wall? Yes. Oh, well, we need a second. Oh, I'm sorry. Someone needs to second. Start. Okay. okay. <laughs> Mr. Donnelly. Yes. Mr. Perkins. Yes. Mr. Bowen. Yes. Congrats. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Yeah. Appreciate your time. Yeah. Next item on the list is uh, Kathleen Nichols. Number 22-18Z, location 22 Roosevelt Road, Hyde Park, grid number 6164-04-795395. Um, anybody in attendance? No. Just move to adjourn the matter to Okay. Uh, since no one from um, Kathleen Nichols' family herself is here. I, I have a motion to adjourn um, this particular item to um, the October 26th meeting. One one moment, Acting Chair. Was this notice, this public hearing? Yes. Okay. So I would open the public hearing. Mm -hmm. Clearly there will be no comments, but just for formality's okay. sake, open it, then close it. I need a motion to open, open the, the public, public hearing. Uh, second. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Yeah. Any comments? Any comments? And no one's here. Thank you. I need a motion to, to adjourn. adjourn. To adjourn the public meeting until October 26th. Motion. Second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. That's it. Interesting.
So you can recall that matter. Jerry. Recall Ishaan. Yeah, I'm going to. Okay. Uh, I'd like a um, a motion to recall the Ishaq uh, matter that we presented initially. I make motion that we recall the public hearing that we previously opened and then temporarily closed. Uh, Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 So Again. because the applicant, I don't want to cut you off, yeah. because you all are here today, um, we only have three members on a five member board. So if they did vote today, and I won't speak to whether they will take an action, but if they did, then you would need a unanimous vote uh, for that variance to be granted. So we would give you the opportunity to adjourn it until we have at least four or five members. Uh, we can cross that bridge when we get to it if they're in a place to make a decision. Good evening, gentlemen. Good evening. Good evening. Have a seat. You guys tonight. Good, thank you. What? You got the floor. Um, well, we adjourned last meeting to uh, give some more time to pretty much take a look at the property. Um, so we're pretty much the same as we were. Mm -hmm. Property's been maintained, everything's still clear. Everything that's been brought to my attention um, has been resolved. I did have a question though. Um, so today I received a attorney letter and I just wanna know why there is an attorney representing one of your members. Sure, so I, I can speak to that. As you've been aware, one of the members has recused since the beginning due to a conflict of interest uh, based upon personal involvement that he has with the property. I don't think it's any secret that he lives across, across the street, street yeah. and there have been ongoing issues for some time. Um, so based on the recusal and based on governing law in the second department, the recusal would want him to abstain, not abstain, to not be involved in the process. He's not to participate in deliberations. He's not to speak to the board members about it. Um, the phrasing is him be entirely withdrawn from the matter, which is why he exits. He has since retained counsel, who I believe is here to speak uh, in regard to the opposition that was filed, which will become part of the record. Um, they're entitled to file an opposition. The public hearing is still open, so those documents can be received. As far as the, well, let me backpedal a bit. Did you receive just the letter or the exhibits, the full I received document? everything. I mean, a little short notice. I don't know why I was getting it the day of the meeting, but. Yes, understood. And so I think that that's gonna be the board's position as well, is that they would not have had sufficient time um, to review it. That said, if you want more time, we could keep the public hearing open to afford you the opportunity to reply. Another option would be to close the public hearing. If we close it, then a decision has to be issued within 62 days. So it sets a bit of a more finite timeline because um, I understand this has been ongoing. And we could keep it open until the end of the week for written submission. So if there was anything you wanted to oppose, then you would be given the opportunity to do so. No, I, I had, I, I reviewed it, so let's continue. Any other neighbors have attorneys? Not to our knowledge, we have not received anything. Okay. You would be the first to know. So we, um, I wanna note that the, the public comment that we received from Paul Donnelly has been received. You have a copy of I it. I do. Um, and the board, as uh, Sarah has said, has not had an opportunity to, to review it. It's quite lengthy uh, in terms of what was submitted, and it was submitted, you know, at whatever time, nine or ten o'clock. And it would behoove us to be able to read what that has to say, um, and that's important so we can render a fair decision. I understand. I mean, everything that's in there, I've read it three times. It's, it's the same that we went yeah, over. Yeah, yeah. Right? Well, I, I, I. I I'm not questioning your, your assessment of the, of the document, but we need to be able to look at the document as well. Uh, and 
make a decision based on all of the inf all the data that comes in. I have a question. May I ask his attorney on when he acquired the attorney and why it was well, such short notice? The, the attorney is going to speak in a moment. Okay. Uh, and so if you are through with any other comments, either We're one sorry. of you, uh, we can we can have um, Mr. Donnelly's attorney step up and, and make her presentation. Sure. Okay. Let's do that. If you gentlemen just want to step to the side, yeah. and well, then you'll be given the opportunity to ask any questions. We're using a little different format now. This is sort of more yeah, a informal. Hello. Hello, how are you? Good evening, Rebecca Volk, Law Office of Rebecca Volk, here representing Mr. Donnelly. Um, Mr. Donnelly has recused himself from this application. However, given that my submission is based upon information in Mr. Donnelly's affidavit, I would ask that he be in the room so I can refer any specific questions the board may have to him. I'll let you make that decision. Yeah. Okay. So I do realize that this matter, uh, you know, has been pending for some time. I think you first scheduled the public hearing at your April meeting. I have become familiar with the minutes and I've watched a good portion of the YouTube videos. And uh, the board has heard from many of the neighbors in the form of personal testimony, written letters, and I believe one councilman came and reported complaints that had been given to him. What we submit to you this evening is, is that the, when you take a look at the five balancing factors of this, that it clearly warrants denial of this variance. The applicant is relying on the fact that it had been in violation for many years and asking you to make the determination <laughs> that reducing it to a two family would be more in compliance with the neighborhood, but that's not the standard. It's for you to determine whether or not a two family home is in the character of this neighborhood. It is our position that the only other homes that are not sole family are, to our information and belief, uh, accessory apartments, where your code permits those on lots of these size with certain parameters, such as being subordinate to the principal residence, limited to 35% of the square footage of the principal residence, and uh, also limited to two bedrooms. So this, is a, this isn't a matter that we are uh, attempting to revert to single family, which is what the applicant states is the only option. We believe that the better option would be under the code where the lot size does permit to have an accessory apartment. We do realize that comes with the additional condition that it has to be owner occupied. However, that is more appropriate for this property given the size. Your code recognizes that if you go to a two family dwelling, it's one acre. Your code contemplates that two families are gonna have more of an impact than an accessory apartment. And we, rec we ask that you consider that when making your determination. We state that the variance is substantial considering the fact that there's a lack of true two family dwellings in this neighborhood. You have received in previous comments as well as the FOIL documents we submitted to you with our submission that there have been numerous complaints regarding trash, sewage smell, because of the massive number of tenants there. Without a control, and an accessory apartment allows you to have that control, without a control on the additional tenants, there's no guarantee that it will not reach to that level again. Finally, and very compelling, is the admitted fact that there was no due diligence done at the time of this purchase. It is not for this board to guarantee careless purchases when no due diligence is done. And the applicant has stated that as much themselves as a ca when it was a cash, cash purchase and the words were, nobody told that we needed to do it. Well, that's on the purchaser to do that due diligence. So we would ask that you would consider the impact that this has had on the neighborhood given all the comments that you've received to date. I ask that you consider the case law I've cited that would support a denial of this variance. I would also note um, that uh, questions regarding my specific relationship and when retained are a matter of attorney-client privilege and I can't answer. However, we are willing to obviously answer questions from the applicant. Chris, do you have any, anything to ask? Or 
Ms. Deschamps? <coughs> This one? Should I hand it back? Sure. Yeah, Daniel and Chris. Um, no, I'm just, I don't want to make this a back and forth, so we're good. I mean, I would like to just address a few things because perhaps you didn't watch all of the minutes. Maybe you did, maybe you mm -hmm. didn't, but there are, I think, a few discrepancies that should be noted. And forgive me for having my phone in my hand. I don't typically. Um, but my notes are on the printer, so I had to have somebody send them to me. As far as, let's see, I did read everything that you provided. I don't know that the board did, but I just wanted to make sure that we addressed um, any issues, like that I could legally address any issues now mm -hmm. so that we didn't have to postpone this any further. So based on prior discussions and other information we have received, which would be part of the record, uh, there are two other properties in the area that have accessory apartments. Legally, they are defined differently, an accessory apartment from a two-family dwelling. Um, as far as practically, I think that's for the board to decide since both are essentially two dwelling units. Mm -hmm. um, I will say that the accessory apartment, one is on 0.62 acres at 33 Greenbush, the other is at 8 Cedar Lane on 0.21 acres. This use that's being applied for is the focus, and that is for uh, two family residents in the zoning district, which with variance is legally authorized. Uh, I also wanted to address, as far as the no due diligence, I would certainly disagree with that because we've received and reviewed multiple documents and while I know what Mr. Eshak said, no offense, I don't want to say that you said it incorrectly but sometimes we say things and they're yeah. not exactly correct, um, that this use changed from a single family code 210 to a two family code 220 in 1992 to 1993. It's been taxed as a two family since 1993 um, the code actually, that, that tax code indicates a two or three family residence. I believe that you went for the two family because three was quite strict and that required a use variance which is a much um, more strict analysis that would be conducted by the ZBA. I also just want to reference the documents with the sale of that that were provided to the board the New York State Department of Taxation and Finance form RP5217 PDF did identify it as a two or three family uh, residential, two, two or three family residential property. Uh, so I just mentioned that because it's come up before and I think due diligence and the self-creation as you all know is one of the factors and that I don't feel it weighed so heavily against the applicant the more information that we were provided. Uh, there was also a fire violation search done, a housing and building violation search done. In fact, the only document that was located by the town, by the zoning administrator that we've reviewed that referenced it as a single family was from the office of the building department. Everything else has indicated that it has been two family. So I also think that's relevant to your argument about the character of the neighborhood and whether or not this is uh, appropriate. So I want the board to have all relevant information. Um, it would also be inaccurate to say that they were irresponsible for not getting a CO. This building was built in 1940. Uh, anything pre-1987 under this code would not have required a CO. Clearly this was, this interior work was done before they became well, Mr. Eshak became the owner of the property. So once it became apparent, that is what brought us all here. I also can't speak to the complaints. The only ones that have been provided um, dated to 2021 onward. He's owned the property for uh, more years than that. And to the extent that complaints have been made, if they are relevant to the balancing test, you can consider it. As far as enforcement, whether it's been abated, what has been done by the applicant that is uh, the province of the code enforcement officers of the town of High Park. 
So I just wanted to clear those up based on prior discussions and information that we have that maybe you didn't. Um, feel free to ask any questions of us or of the applicants. I would just add that I was aware of the information regarding the assessor. There is case law that assessor's codes are not binding on the building department's determination and a permitted use. If we do allow additional submissions, I'm happy to brief on that issue. Uh, yeah, I, I saw, my, mine was the, um, the tax form is filled out at the sale. Mm -hmm. That's done by the owner and the seller. That has no. Mm -hmm. It's signed by both. But it's, mm -hmm. but it's mm -hmm. no, no jurisdiction or um, authority. It's no, just, and you're not obligated for, to. Just for a matter of paying yes. taxes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And some kind of record that this is the amount that the building understood and yeah. what it's being taxed as mm -hmm. yeah can I add something we're not saying that them saying we didn't do no due diligence is it's incorrect we do same due diligence as every person buying or selling we rely on our attorneys we rely on the closers we rely, rely on everyone giving us this information so if the buyer's attorney is saying that, oh yeah it is a two-family the title company does their search and says oh it came up as a two-family the closing is a two-family what how are we gonna do more due diligence than that so it, everything was passed and our thought was it was a two family so we were buying a two family so we did our homework it's just that you know whatever slipped through the cracks slipped through the cracks i i would just note that i believe the earlier indications where it was a cash sale and those searches were not done at the time of the original purchase i also um my client has reminded me that um and it will be stated it's stated in the affidavit that um, he, speaking with the tenant, was informed that there are rooms being rented in the basement, and he asked that the town look into that. Okay. Well, uh, given the testimony, given um, our attorney's uh, comprehensive statement about what was and what isn't true, I'd, um, and the fact that we are really under underserved here on the board, I'd like to make a motion to um, close the public hearing uh, and um, make a decision within the next 62 days. May I just ask, is it closed to any further submissions? Okay. You don't want to accept written submissions? You don't have to. But I just mentioned it earlier. For so if days. we just want to close it, we can. Well, I would, I would be in, uh, agreeable to a certain amount of time. I mean, do you want to do by Friday at 5 p.m.? Talking about this Friday? Yeah. Today is Wednesday. I would I, ask I, if... I, I'll, I'll be a little more generous. Let's say a week from Friday. <laughs> so that would be uh, October 4th or 5th, yeah. I believe. So so when? Of 7th? Okay. Yeah. October 7th. So the, the oral portion of the meeting will be closed. Yes of the public hearing will be closed and written submissions will be accepted by the board through October 7th at 5 p.m. Correct. Okay. So, okay. so that when we read this, if we have any comments, we can, we can make them also. Sure. May I have a motion to that effect? I made motion. Okay. <laughs> and I second it. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. Good evening. Yeah, we're going to have to make a motion to close. Is that it? Uh, I need a motion to um, adjourn the public meeting. Second. All in favor? Aye. So be it. Thank you.